Good morning. We're going to read today a book called The Apple Doll. The Apple Doll? Have you ever seen a doll made out of an apple? I haven't either. It's written by Alisa Cleaven. The Apple Doll. Oh, look how pretty the pictures are. They look like they're done in watercolors, don't they? Lizzie loved her apple tree. Looks like a lot of other things liked it, too. What do you see? I see a cat. There's another cat on her back. And there's a dog and a bird and a squirrel. And an, there's several birds. And then there's a family here in the window. She loved to pretend it was a skeleton rattling in the autumn wind. The gingerbread cake with frosted icing. Does it look like a skeleton with no leaves on it? <gasps> And does the tree here look like frosting on it? Or what's it actually got on it? Can you tell? Snow! That's right. A blossomy springtime cloud. Oh, look how pretty that is. All the blossoms out. And a leafy summer circus. She loved to eat its apples. Apples for crunching, apples for munching, apples for applesauce, cider, and pie. Oh, that sounds so good. The day Lizzie started school, she picked her favorite apple of all. It was round as a ball, warm as the sunlight, too happy to pack it in her lunchbox. Lizzie rubbed the apple, freckled skin against her cheek. She told the apple secrets. I'm scared to start school, she whispered. What if I don't make any friends? I'll be your friend, Lizzie pretended the apple whispered back. Lizzie named her apple Savannah, Susanna, and made her an apple twig body. Susanna danced in the treetops. Lizzie called her mother. Come down now. You'll be late for school. Here I am, Mama, said Lizzie. And here's your sandwich and juice, Mama said. Now why did you put that apple on a stick? It won't fit in your lunchbox. It's okay, Lizzie replied. I'm going to keep this apple. An apple won't keep for ever warned Lizzie's big sister, Jill. It'll get all mushy and rotten. Lizzie drew a face on S Susanna. She held her up like a puppet and said, Mushy, rotten, not me. Jill made a face of her own. You're always pretending, Lizzie. School will be good for you. You'll make some real friends. Lizzie wasn't so sure. It's her first day at school. Were you scared the first day you went to school? As she sat in her new classroom and looked at all the strange faces, Lizzie wished she could run home and hide in her apple tree. She breathed in Susanna's sweet smell and felt better. Susanna was a small piece of her tree. No food during class time, dear, said it, Lizzie's teacher, Miss Maxwell. We'll wait till lunchtime to eat. She isn't food, said Lizzie showing Miss Maxwell Susanna's smiling face. Miss Maxwell didn't smile back. 
No toys during class either except on sharing day. Please put your apple away now. At lunchtime, Lizzie took Susanna out again. Is that a doll? asked a girl named Molly. Lizzie nodded. Her name is Susanna. I like her leafy hair, said Molly. Susanna needs a haircut, yelled a boy named James, swiping off Susanna's stem. She needs clothes, said a girl named Kate. Lizzie wrapped her napkin around Susanna's twiggy body. She has a dress. Why don't you play with a real doll, asked Kate. An apple's a silly doll. Her brains are apple seeds, said James. Lizzie felt like crying, but Susanna just smiled peacefully. Were the children nice? Some were, some weren't. You don't have to go to school anymore, Lizzie told Susanna later that day. But if you do need new hair, after a hug and a snack, Lizzie gathered some scraps of yarn. She gave Susanna soft brown hair and a ride on her dragon and some bright clay animals to play with. Lizzie hoped Susanna would never be lonely while she was at school. But Lizzie was lonely. She's not found any friends yet, has she? The weather was getting colder. The family was busy baking and canning and drying apples for the winter. This will be delicious when all the fresh apples are gone, Mama said. Your own apple isn't looking too fresh, Lizzie, Jill said. Why don't you make another doll out of a sock or something? I don't want another doll, said Lizzie. I wish Susanna would last forever. Maybe you could freeze her with the pies, said Jill. Lizzie shook her head. Susanna would hate it in the freezer. You could plant her seeds in the ground, Jill suggested. After a little while, her seeds would take root and she'd grow into a baby apple tree. But I don't want to plant Susanna, Lizzie said. I couldn't hold her if she was a tree. But you could climb her on her, said Jill, and eat her apples in the fall, and every spring she would blossom. Is that a good idea? Not a bad idea. Lizzie thought about that as she watched Papa skin apples for drying. Suddenly she had an idea. Could we dry Susanna? She asked. Why don't I think about that? Said Mama. My grandmother made me a dried apple doll when I was small and I didn't get it didn't get mushy or rotten. Said Lizzie. Never, said Mama. We'll have to peel Susanna first, but don't worry, I think you'll like watching her change. Lizzie helped Mama peel Susanna and gave her a brand new face. Now we'll soak her in some lemon juice bath so bugs and worms won't eat her, said Mama. And then we can dry out for a week or so. Each day, Susanna got a little more wrinkled and smiley. She smelled as fresh as ever, though like apples and lemons together. One morning, Lizzie gave her cotton hair, blue beads, eyes, and a lacy shawl, and a bendable new pipe cleaner body because her old twig body was feeling a bit stiff. Can you see her apple face? She's now a dried apple.
Wow, said Mama when she saw her. Susanna looks better th than new. She looks old, said Papa, and very happy and strong. She looks like a little grandma, said Jill. You should show her off at school, Lizzie. It's sharing day today, added Mama. What if the other kids teased me? Jill held up Susanna like a puppet. Te tease such a strong, happy, wise old woman, she asked. Never! So Susanna returned to school. This is my apple doll, said Lizzie, when it was her turn to share. What an unusual doll, Miss Maxwell said. Where did she come from? She came from my apple tree. She used to be an apple, and she'll, she's still an apple, but we dried her, and now she's real exclaimed Molly. She looks alive. I wish I had a grandma doll, said Kate. I want an apple grandpa, yelled James. Your doll is very intriguing, Lizzie, said Miss Maxwell. How would you like to teach us all how to make apple people for our art project tomorrow? Izzy smiled. You start with an apple, The next morning, an apple sat on every desk. Apple people soon danced through the classroom. Izzy and Susanna had many friends to play with at home in their tree. All of her friends liked the apple doll, didn't they? In the spring and summer, autumn and winter, they always had each other too. And then in the back of the book is the recipe on how to make an apple doll. The supplies you need is a large, firm, unblemished apple. Any kind will do, but Granny Smith's work especially well. An apple peeler or a sharp knife, but have Mama help you with those. A plastic knife or pu pumpkin carving knife, a ballpoint pen, or other not so sharp pointed tools. Enough lemon juice to completely cover your apple, salt, pipe cleaners, glue, yarn, wool, or cotton balls for hair, colored beads, or pink marker, scraps of fabric, lace, feathers, or small pre-made doll clothes. And with help from an adult, carefully peel your apple. Hold your apple stem up and with the pumpkin carver or plastic knife, carve an outline of the shape you want the nose to be on the finished doll. Then carve out that that shape. This is the trickiest part of making apple people and may require adults help. Using a ballpoint pen or other pointed tools, poke holes or slits in the apple for eyes. Use the same tool to carve out a mouth. Put enough lemon juice in a bowl to completely cover your apple Dissolve a tablespoon of salt in the juice. Soak the apple in the mixture for half an hour. The apple will bob to the top of the liquid, so be sure to set a heavy object like a plate or a lid on it to weigh it down. Drying the apple, it takes several days. The apple will draw, dry if left in any warm, dry place. It will dry most quickly in the oven. Set the apple upright on a greased cookie sheet. Cover the apple's nose, because we don't want it to get burnt. 
with a scrap of tin foil to prevent burning and put the apple on the oven set 200 degrees for about 30 minutes and then reduce the oven to warm for the lowest setting. At this point you may want to rotate the apple so its bottom doesn't get mushy. Leave your apple in the warm oven for about three days turn the oven off at night. Instead of using an oven you can dry the apple by leaving it in the sunny windowsill or a car dashboard. However you choose to dry out your apple, feel free to pinch, mold, and shape the apple's face as it dries. And then to make the apple body you take, carefully poke a hole in the bottom of the apple with thin pointed stick like a skewer and insert the pipe cleaner securely and then make the arms and the legs and the body and glue yarn, wool, cotton ball securely to the apple doll's head and you can dress it in anything you would like but your apple doll will end up looking like this. So while you're off from school and if you have any apples you can make your own apple doll and they'll look very wrinkly like an old lady or an old man either way you want to do it. I hope you have a great day. Bye.